Welcome more gamers, Doug here from 2 Plus Tough, and I want to talk about this guy today. This is the Siegebreaker Behemoth for the Spires faction from the game Conquest by Parabellum. We talk about it here on the channel, and they sent me this a while ago, like right when I was getting ready to move, and so it just wasn't a good time for me. However, I'm going to be doing a giveaway with this model as we talk about it today. So here's how it's going to work. In this video, we're going to talk all about this particular model from a game standpoint. What can you reasonably expect from it? What is its value to you and your collection? Should you buy it? Is it worth buying? And you know, more than just if you like the model, of course, uh, and, and talk about it in that sense, as well as like some list building ideas and some synergies for it. For Spire players who maybe would be interested in this model, if you leave a comment down below uh, in this video, I will randomly choose one of you. And if you live in the, uh, we'll say the greater North America, uh, I'll send this guy to you. To be entered, just enter a comment from when this video goes live to February 5th, 2024 is when I'll do the entry thing. And that following Tuesday, I'll announce the winner and get it sent to you. But with that out of the way, let's get into talking about the Spires and the Siegebreaker Behemoth as a regiment you can play in Conquest. I just want to start off by looking at the model itself, because again, when you buy this, you're buying the product. And this is an absolutely stunning monster. It has this like nice burrowing war worm kind of feel to it. Like it's a subterranean creature that bursts out and just hacks and slashes at things. It seems like it would be insanely hard to corral. Like if you're the human forces, the hundred kingdoms trying to fight this thing, just I could see, see its tail lashing around and it's spiraling. And like all spire creations, they are essentially designed from the ground up, like on a genetic level. These are all artificial organisms through the use of their not magic that they call biomancy. All of their soldiers from the lowly drones to, you know, these like wonderful massive creations, these hulking monsters, were all designed from the ground up. The carapace, the way that they even communicate, the way that this monster receives orders is through the use of pheromones, uh, often by other characters or leaders or whatever, that are basically like channeling these like switches inside of its brain. It's a biomechanical automaton. And that's how it knows when to go, to stop, to fight, to sleep, to whatever. Now the Spires are interesting because they already have one of the best monsters in the entire game, the Abomination. Uh, the Abomination is incredible because of its speed. It can just race up the board. So despite being heavy, you can reliably get it to places where you need heavy support. So let's head over to the Parabellum Army Builder site and take a look at how they turned this model into a set of rules. Starting with a few very important stats, we have the fact that he is a monster. So this is that big, big colossal base, which I mean, let's be honest, you saw the model. That's expected. He has, um, he's also a heavy, so he is going to be coming in somewhat later in the game, probably mid game, because of course now in second edition, you can choose one model to come in and you get him for 180 points. Now, all things considered, knowing that he doesn't need a lot of support, then we'll talk about that later uh, as we can move further into the stat lines. I think that that is a pretty dang good deal, but we will see. So moving into the other parts of his uh, entry here, we have his movement value of six, which is not spectacular to be perfectly honest with you, considering the abomination has a speed of 10, but we'll keep going. A volley of zero, that makes sense. He's not a ranged fighter. A clash of three, so that's pretty great. When he does the charge and he gets his little bonuses and that kind of stuff, he, he will be generally hitting really well. So that's awesome. Eight attacks with that swing, that's, that's nice. Um, wounds 14. Puts him kind of on par with the rest of the big monsters, I think, for the majority of the game, or at least in that price bracket. He's got a resolve of five, which is wonderful. I mean, honestly, a monster that big and scary should not be running away very easily. Defense four and evasion zero. So putting that into perspective, he's not going to move super fast, but that's more offset by the fact that you can kind of choose to bring him in a little bit earlier. And the Spires do have ways to increase the speeds of their various units, whether it's spell, you know, not spells, biomancy stuff, uh, draw events, those kinds of things. There are a lot of ways to really ramp this guy up. As far as his special rules go, uh, he doesn't have a lot, which has kind of surprised me. I was thinking there was going to be like maybe some cool tunneling options or whatever, but that wasn't really the vibe they were going for. And that's, that's totally cool. We have brutal impact. When this stand with the special rule impact inflicts impact attacks, those impact attacks reduce the enemy's defense by X. So essentially when he charges, whatever he hits, this is essentially coming in with run three. He's real gross. Next to that is his impact value, which is the number of you know, impact attacks you make when you do that kind of thing. But when he charges in, he will get 
his five impact attacks that are negating three of their armor defense, rather. I'm sorry. Those are five incredible shots, along with the regular eight. Of course, as a big monster, he's going to have fearless. Uh, Smite is an interesting one. Enemy regiments count their total defense characteristic as zero against hits caused by a stand with this special roll during a clash action. Now this is important because what this is saying is when he charges in, he's gonna mess some stuff up because their armor counts as zero. They can still use their evasion, so there's still ways to dodge him. And if they're exceptionally heavily armored, like say Dragon Slayers or something like that, they can withstand the brutal impact part. Like there's a chance to do that. So it's kind of offsetting some of the initial damage, but when he comes in for that first charge, that's gonna be 13 really nasty attack. And terrifying too, which makes sense for something like this uh, regiments in contact with this stand reduce their resolve characteristic by x so uh resolving comes down a little bit for him he has a fantastic resolve but if you look at some base units on other other regiments like where they have maybe resolve two or three that's not fun so without a doubt we can look at this guy's you know entry here and say he's meant to murder things Whatever you point the Siege Breaker Behemoth at, he is going to wreck. Now, based on kind of the way his entry is filled out here, you're going to get the most value out of him targeting things that nobody else wants to fight. I used Dragon Slayers before, but that's a fantastic example of like, they're this big, thick unit that with the right buffs and bonuses makes them nigh, you know, impenetrable. Throw this in there. Off the bat, he's going to be able to ignore an immense amount of what makes them defensive. I do love the idea, however, that he's not really that great against like evasive based armies, which could either be a great mirror match of the Spire because they can get some pretty great evasive uh, stats or the Nords. To that end though, he has some big flaws. One of them is that first off, that base is massive. He is a huge target. He has no real defense or any kind of special defense against being shot. So you need to get him into combat ASAP. And because he's heavy, he comes in more towards the mid game. If you have not set up a target for him and maybe like you accidentally block his path from getting to where he needs to be, or you've let your enemy like kind of have multiple encircling, basically like let them bubble wrap important units, his effectiveness will go down. So you are going to see very quickly the players who are great at using him as a scalpel. Like I have a missile in my pocket. That sounded weird, but I got a missile and I can fire it at one thing. What is the thing on the table that needs to go away? When you reach the turn, when you can start bringing heavies on and you now have a choice, you honestly might choose something else because if you wait just another turn and your target opens up, he's gonna be a lot more effective. Now to that end, I will say, when the Siege Breaker Behemoth touches whatever he is trying to kill, it is going to be a spectacular moment. There are a few other regiments in this game where I can look at the stat line and be like, oh wow. <laughs> like that's, when it when it delivers, when it gets to its target, it is going to act the way we all imagine it does when we look at the model, which is this thrashing murder machine. And to that end, I think they did a great job. Now, how can we make this just a little bit better? Well, one thing that's important to know about the Siege Breaker Behemoth is that he is going to be kind of exclusive to somewhat more elite armies. The reason I say that is in Conquest, the units or regiments you have access to are dictated by your character. So, uh, for example, if you wanted to take the Behemoth, the only character that can have him right now is the Lineage Highborn. It's in his uh, restricted entry right here, which means you have to take a Lineage Highborn, uh, at least one regiment for him to join, in this case, Avatara, to then unlock the Siege Breaker Behemoth. So minimum, that's a five model package. One leader, three man unit, plus the Behemoth. And that might sound like a tax, but here's the thing, if you plan your list, for this little chunk here, these five models can put out a wealth of murder. The Lineage Highborn is one of the coolest models in all of Conquest. And I don't just mean like from a literal model perspective, although I do love the miniature guys, you, you knocked that out of the park. But I also mean from a rules perspective, these guys are towering brutes that just have so many cool rules because they're meant to represent that higher, or I should say highest class of Spire society trying to get into war personally. They do it through these like, remote viewing machines. And when we look at the Lineage Highborn, if you were to make him your general, and that's a big if because I assume you're gonna have other, you know, war bands or whatever inside of your list that would probably make stronger choices for leader, but let's say you wanted to, this guy does come with some really cool things. He allows you to have a lot more uh, mutations essentially, but there's only really one that I wanted to focus on right now. That is right here, Ferromantic Override. This draw event can only be resolved once per battle. Target a friendly regiment within six inches of this character stand. That regiment may immediately perform a free additional out of sequence clash 
volley or march action. This action does not cause the regiment to count as having activated this round. So when I talk about using him as a missile, what I'm envisioning is you see the target you need to kill. The Siege Breaker Behemoth comes on with his first action. He does his moves up the board and then if he can't charge the turn he comes on the board, but you can either use this to move him up the board in that turn, meaning if you just rocket him forward, he gets another move action after he does his. Or once he's in there, he could just attack twice. That is awesome. Another really fun one here is sensory augmentation. Um, when this character's command card is drawn, look at the top card of your opponent's command stack. You can then activate your next command card instead. And so essentially what that means is you draw the highborn, you look at your opponent, and if you see that they're going to activate their big nasty thing that's going, you know, you want your siege breaker behemoth to stop, you can go hold up. Now I'm going to switch. And as long as the siege breaker behemoth is the next card, your missile is primed and ready to go. None of those synergies are particularly fancy. Spire players are much more crafty than I tend to be, so if you are a Spire player, please leave your best ideas for synergies and combos down below. But those are the two that immediately off the top of my head, I was like, well, you already have to take the Highborn. So I was just looking at his kind of buffs that he could offer, and I do like the once per game thing, but also having that trick of like, you never quite know what card they could react to you with, with the transmutation at the bottom there. I, I think that's a fantastic ability. The way that I see it, the, the Spires really expel, uh, sorry, expel, excel as a faction because they allow the player to like, in a, in a game of rock, paper, scissors, change from one to the other, right? They can change from rock to paper, paper to scissors, whatever they wanted to do. They do that through all the cool draw effects that they have or draw events and um, unit effects, special abilities, that kind of thing, where they change the tempo of the game by moving the command stack around, uh, letting you reactivate more. Anyway, my point is having a murder machine that is so singularly focused on one thing, right? Just brutal melee combat and he wants to charge. That's a very valuable scalpel, a very specific tool to have in the Spire's chest, so to speak. So if you get good, at manipulating the flow of the game, the tempo, tricking your opponent, having backup plans by stuff like this where you can use different command cards. It's gonna make the Siege Breaker Behemoth much more valuable than 180 points. Now, as I said, I'm gonna go ahead and give away my Siege Breaker Behemoth to one of you folks who leaves a comment on my video. I'll ship to anywhere in North America. What I'd really like as far as those comments to be, if you just wanna enter, go ahead and just say entering or something like that. If you're a Spires player, I would very much uh, love the fact if you gave me just some of your best synergies, ideas of how to use this guy, when to bring him in, any wisdom you can share, because we have a lot of folks who are part of the playtesting team, um, as well as just dedicated Spire player. So I would love to know your thoughts. How do you get the most out of this guy? And do you agree with my assessment? He is a laser focused murder machine melee charge bot. That's all he wants to do. What's your take? Leave in the comments down below and next Tuesday I will pick a winner. I'll announce it through like a YouTube post, but um, it'll be like in a video that following Tuesday, uh, giving you all kinds of kudos. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Happy Wargaming.